today's NICU nugget is on the oxygenation index or OI. OI is used as a marker of respiratory failure, most commonly in persistent pulmonary hypertension of the newborn. It measures the amount of respiratory support that a baby needs to maintain a level of oxygenation. So basically, the higher the oxygenation index, the higher the OI, the more respiratory support and FiO2 the baby needs, therefore the sicker the baby is. I see people in the unit all the time wander around with cards with the formula and equation written on it. It's very easy to understand and to remember and to calculate yourself. So just listen on and you'll never have to try to remember the formula again. The first thing that you have to realize, which you already know, is that the higher the FiO2 the baby needs to maintain the saturations and to maintain the baby's PaO2, the sicker the baby is. This is very logical. If a baby is on 100% FiO2, that baby likely has a higher oxygenation index than a baby who's on 25% FiO2. The second thing you need to remember is that the oxygenation index is dependent on the mean airway pressure. If you don't remember that or you don't understand that concept, go look at the ventilator lecture and it explains that very thoroughly there. If the baby is on the oscillator, then the mean airway pressure is actually one of the parameters that you have to type into the machine. So you can just get that number and plug it into the equation. If the baby is on the conventional vent or on the jet, then basically the mean airway pressure, as we've already learned, is the weighted average between the pip and the peep, depending on how much time is spent in each. Most machines will pretty much calculate it, and on one of the screens, you'll be able to figure out exactly what the mean airway pressure is. If the baby is on CPAP or high flow or low flow nasal cannula, then you definitely should be worrying about the OI. The baby is not sick enough for you to have to start calculating the OI. So you also need to know the mean to calculate the OI. And the third and final thing you need to know is that the denominator of the equation is the partial pressure of oxygen, which is the amount of oxygen that's dissolved in blood. So when you're getting a gas, so you get an arterial blood gas, for example, and it says 7.35, and then the PaCO2 is like 45 or whatever, the number after that is the amount of oxygen that's dissolved in blood, or the partial pressure of oxygen. That is your denominator. Obviously, the more oxygen that's dissolved in blood, the better that the lungs are functioning and therefore the lower the oxygenation index. Realize to calculate the OI, you need an actual arterial blood sample. You can't calculate the OI from the oxygen saturation that you just get off the monitor. You need an actual blood sample. Preferably it would be preductal since we'd expect that to be higher. Remember that an umbilical arterial catheter is actually postdoctal. It would also be preferable if you actually had an inline catheter, so you actually had an arterial line or you had a UAC in place, just so that you could continuously monitor the OI and watch the general pattern. So what is the equation? The OI is equal to the fraction of inspired oxygen times 100 times the mean airway pressure in centimeters of water divided by the partial pressure of oxygen dissolved in blood. So again, very logically, the higher the FiO2, the higher the mean, then it means that the more respiratory support the baby is on. The higher the PaO2, as it's the denominator, it also means that the baby is doing better since we've been able to get more of the oxygen into the baby's blood from the lungs. So therefore the OI is lower. I am pretty much only calculating the OI when the infant is on 100% oxygen. So the first part of the equation, the fraction of inspired oxygen, would be 1 times 100. So therefore it would be 100, the first part of the equation. If, for example, the baby was on 50%, then you would take 0.5 times 100, so it would be 50. Again, if the baby's on 50% FiO2, then they're probably not sick enough to start worrying about the OI. So let's do an example. Let's say you have a neonate who is on 100% FiO2, who is on the oscillator with a mean airway pressure of 25, and you got an arterial gas sample that showed that the PaO2 was 64. What is the OI? So the OI in this case would be 1 times 100, so 100, times 25 divided by 64, which equals 39. 39 is a pretty high OI. Generally, as your OIs get higher and higher, there's a higher chance of mortality from respiratory failure. Many centers consider a cutoff of an OI of 25 or above as a place to start INO. 
Once the OI starts creeping up to 35 or 40, then the baby should at least be in a center where ECMO is possible. So 35 or 40 is when you should be considering ECMO. Overall, even if the OIs aren't that high, then it's still a useful parameter to use just so that you can follow the overall trend of how the baby is doing. I hope you learned something today. Please remember to like and subscribe and tell us what you'd like to hear about next. Thank you.